you this question. So you said when you came out of the hospital, you had two hospitalizations mm -hmm. and you're getting therapy. At any point, were you on medication? Yeah, yeah I was. I've, I've been on um, antidepressants and anti-anxiety uh, anxiety medications. But what did they times. think they were? So for you, I know you said the anxiety and the depression mm -hmm. and just the not feeling like a male. How do they diagnose that? Um, at the time when, um, you know, things, things were a little different, I was diagnosed with uh, gender identity disorder. I think that's what they call it. I remember um, hearing stuff like G -G that. G-I-D. Right, right, right. Um, and that's, I was diagnosed with that when I was in the hospital in New York. Okay. Um, and I, I think that I talked about it a little bit in therapy, but mm -hmm. it didn't really go much further than that. You know, okay. I was never really pushed on to a therapist or someone who, who specialized in trans health. Mm -hmm. um, it was more just bouncing around between therapist to therapist mm -hmm. and people that just weren't really helping me much. Okay. And then you come out. I remember, I remember before, um, you know, that, that incident at school, I was, I was seeing a therapist and she told my mom, oh, he just needs a job. He just needs a job to keep his mind occupied. So I was like, okay, you heard the therapist, you're getting a job. And is that when military came in? No, I was like 15 then. Oh, okay. It was, you know, I was, I was really young. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm in high school. A job? Yeah. I was like, what, what am I, I going to do for a job? I don't right. have a car. I can't get anywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just, I know my mom also wanted to help, but like after every therapy session, she'd be like, what did the therapist say? You know, what did they say? Tell me everything. And I'm like, oh, it's, it's therapy. This is yeah, one-on-one. -on -one. One -on -one. If it was group therapy, you'd be in there. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, just like the whole therapy system then was just broken. It was just broken. It and it, it didn't get me anywhere. Mm -hmm. I felt more anxious going to therapy than than, you know, with everything else going on and because then I I haven't seen a therapist since then. I, I I have a hard time going to see a therapist. I've gone on my phone, I've gone to make phone calls, but I get so much anxiety about till today. Seeing, till today about seeing a therapist because of all of what happened when I was younger. It, I, I will share this with you. Therapy takes time and it takes, for some people, you get lucky and you can find someone and there's a match. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to go through several to make a connection. Um, I, I do say, um, if for nothing else, and, and, and it's your terms, when you're ready, you know what you need, mm -hmm. um, but to always have someone to talk to, a support system. Um, and it took me a while, but I found a therapist that I've been with, I wanna say, sometime now, I wanna say at least over six years. Wow, that's possibly. incredible. And that's incredible. I've, I've, my husband actually found him for me out of crisis. Really? It, in a hospital. And when I was released from the hospital, I was released to extensive outpatient therapy. Mm -hmm. And that was the same thing you explained. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, that. drug addicts, teens, abuse, and me. And you're sitting there taking it all in like, why am I here? This makes no sense to me. So now it's doing more damage. And that just went left. And I ended up finding this guy, and I've been with him ever since, um, who, the, the key with therapy I find is, find someone that you can disclose everything without judgment, and where they can speak to you as a person, and not everything is textbook answers. Oh, you said a key word, you need to be hospitalized. Because that's, that's not gonna help anything. Right, because now you're gonna hold back information because I know what your response is going to be. We've, we've done it longer than they have mm -hmm. in most cases. So when you are holding back information and not being authentic with your story, then you can't get treated or helped. And if I'm not being treated or helped because I'm afraid of what you're going to do, you're just getting a paycheck and I'm just sitting here for no reason. And so I, I think that's where some of that anxiety comes from. And another 
you know, with traveling Mm -hmm. a lot, you know, with, with this line of work the past couple of years, you know, I've, I've moved five times, Mm -hmm. um, you know, since, since last March, you know, and, you know, the past two years, basically. Right. Um, so I, I've tried looking into, you know, like some of the online therapy options, but a lot of them don't take, you know, insurance right. and it's all privatized and they, they say, oh, well, you're low income. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll discount it down to $120 a session. I, I can't afford right. $120 a session. And one week I may need three in one week. Absolutely. It's just healthcare should not be a profit, you know? Providers need to be able to, you know, make their income and mm-hmm. everything. But that's one of the problems that we have in this country mm-hmm. is that people can't get adequate health care and therapy and mental health services and everything that they need because it's it's all for profit. And if you don't have insurance, then who helps you? Nobody. 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 You go into ER and then you go into 24-hour hold and then you're treated like a criminal. I know... I, I say that because I, I want you when you're ready, but I would suggest if you can some way. Um, and I know you're doing the research, but that outlet, cause you never know when the feelings come up to need someone to talk to. Um, I know it was pivotal for me and this person I can count on at all cost, And I trust him a hundred percent. I, um, so I just wanted to share that with you. Well, thank you for that. Uh, yeah. I want to, in reading your background and your story, um, let's, how about we do this? I want you to tell them how we met. Okay. But I also want you to, to start and, and tell, cause when I looked at your story and I read your story, I was like amazed Amaze, and then when I looked at your bodybuilding <laughs> pictures, I was like, "Well, hold oh, up, yeah. hold like, all of that." I was like, "What? What? The what? Like this one?" Oh. And yeah, this... we will we'll have them up. Yeah, okay. like it, and... it seems like whatever you do, you go hard. Yeah, I. So tell I, I think I think my mom said that to me at one point. You know, you go from one extreme Oops. to the other, and and that's and that's kind of how it was. You know, I I was back and forth for a while mm-hmm. from, you know, gotta gotta get big. You know, when I started working out in high school, mm-hmm. you know, my dad took notice. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, there's dad's attention. Uh-huh. Let's start getting big. And uh-huh. you know, he was encouraging. He was like, hell yeah. And I was like, hell yeah, let's okay. go. And then it would start to you know sink in oh, what am I doing to myself it feels this good gonna, for a while the endorphins is, right right you know and 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 to this day you know I, I still work out a little bit because you know it's good for your mental health mm-hmm. but it got to a point where it was abusing myself mm-hmm. by working out so much because I was trying to you know I was putting on a facade you know I was putting on a mask for someone that I knew that I wasn't because I was trying to get the approval of my father mm-hmm. So I get big and that you now get really sad and like nope, it's gotta worse. stop, gotta this transition. Is what you're doing. Yeah. Exactly that. It was like a pulsing wave. Uh-huh. And then I'd you know I'd stop working out, I'd start getting like feminine again. Mm-hmm. And I'm like I'm gonna start the transition. My dad would take notice. He doesn't like it. Need dad's love. Start going back again, mm-hmm. and it was just back and forth back like and forth. that. And I remember I was I was 19. And I had stopped working out for a couple months. Mm-hmm. You know, I was wearing a little bit of makeup here and there. My hair was getting a little bit longer. And you know, I came out to my mom again. I told her, I said, I'm, I'm going to start transitioning. At this point, it, was, it wasn't, hey, I think I'm going to transition. Mm-hmm. Hey, mom, I'm trans. It was, no, I'm transitioning. You mm-hmm. know, this is, you know, I'm going through with it. And... You know, my mom got really scared, and when my mom gets scared, it's either fight or flight. Mm-hmm. You know, and she kind of fights it a little bit. You know, and, she, and you know, she was saying, "You're rushing into this. It's too fast. You need to go talk to somebody first. You need to talk with me and your dad to make sure it's okay." I'm like, "No, it's not. Make sure it's okay." Like, I've known this at this mm-hmm. point for you know, you know, ten years now. Mm-hmm. I got to do it. And, you know, I got my prescription 
And my mom said, well, you need to talk to your dad. And I said, I'll talk to him when I'm ready. And then she went and talked to him on my behalf without telling me. Uh-huh. And he freaked out. He said, if you start those hormones, you, you'll find yourself on the street. You won't have a place here. Mm. Things were just different. He was disappointed in me. Uh-huh. And I just, I, I, I don't think that he liked me anymore. Uh-huh. And that's kind of from there on, I, I spent a long time trying to you know, get his attention. Coming back from boot camp was, was terrible. Um, you know, about a week after I, I came home, um, you know, my, uh, I, I lost my, my best friend. Um, she, she had taken her own life. Uh-huh. Um, her name was Brianna. She was beautiful. You know, I loved her. I still do. And Brianna uh, was from your hometown. She wasn't from my hometown, mm-hmm. but I met her when I got to my new high school. Okay. Um, she was a really sweet girl. She cared about people, and she did a lot for other people before giving anything for herself. Mm. And I, I felt a lot of guilt after. Because I felt like I, I wasn't there when she needed me to be. I knew that she was hurting, mm-hmm. but I didn't know how much, or I didn't pick up on how much. Mm. So that happened, and that didn't help you at all. No, it it definitely didn't help my my mental health. I, it it was it, it was a rough time. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm trying to figure out, you know, where I'm going with my life. You know, should I actually be here? What where where, what's what's going on? And that's kind of where this back and forth trend between bodybuilding and getting big, you know, for dad's attention, mm-hmm. kind of set in. And then it was overwhelming and realizing, no, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. I should be coming out and starting my transition. Mm-hmm. And then. I'd, fall down I'd start getting effeminate dad hates me start working out again and it was back and forth like that for a while Shifting. yeah and I I ended up starting you know dating this girl mm-hmm. who who was who was by and mm-hmm. you know somehow it came up in conversation and she said that you you should come out like you, because I, I had said to her, I think I'm trans, and she's like, do you think you're trans, or are you actually trans? I'm like, I'm actually trans. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. And and she, you know, she encouraged me to, you know, come out and start to transition, and that was a really awkward phase of my life. Cause, yeah, so I'm going to question. Okay. She's bi? Yeah. She was, she's bi, yeah. She dates male, female. Yeah, yeah. And right, right after, um, or I, I guess I should say, right before, you know, I met her. You know, mm-hmm. She, she was dating a girl okay. for for a long while. And then you was just owning your. I was trance. Kyle. You I was know, Kyle, I but was, you didn't know which way you were going. Yeah, in. I, I was Kyle when I met her. You mm-hmm. know, I had a beard. You know, I was working out like really mm-hmm. heavy. You know, I can't look at you and picture any of this, right? Other than I, the, because I saw the pictures, I, but you didn't have the beard in the picture. I sometimes I look back at, at some of those pictures. And I'm like, who even is that? Like, I don't know oh, him. Gorgeous in all of them, seriously. Oh, well, because <laughs> Kyle thanks. definitely, I know, turned heads. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, you know what? What's funny is that now. Um, a lot of girls like looking back on that they're like oh you were so cute I would have climbed you like a tree I'm like where were you <laughs> and you're I'm like, like where were you because I, I was lonely a lot because people thought I was gay even as Kyle as Kyle even, bodybuilding even bodybuilding Kyle people thought I was gay okay pause there's no way yeah I, well, you, well, you can't, well, let me, let me stop there and rephrase that because that's me doing a judgment, Mm -hmm. which a lot of people do, but that picture is like a magic mic. Ooh. It really, it's like that whole, you know, and 
and, and I'm going to tell them. So, because we're talking about looks and appearances, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're both flight attendants with United Airlines. And I'm on a flight, and it's my first time meeting Kaylee. And prior to me working in the airlines, I worked for major designers for years, for years. And so I'm always looking at fashion, and I'm always looking at just looking at skin and people. And I just kept saying to her, wow, your skin, your skin, your cheekbones, because her hair was shorter then. And so you could really see her cheekbones. I think you had on the scarf that we wear on our neck mm -hmm. and you had on a dress and I'm looking at her cheekbones, her cheekbones. And I kept saying, I just kept saying it like obsessive because it was it, in like your skin reminded me of Charlize Theron. So I just kept saying it. Now, if you remember, we flew with another flight attendant. This is my first time seeing you, mm -hmm. meeting you, everything. So when I go to the back and I didn't share this with you, she says to me, are you trying to be funny? You know, that's not nice. And I'm like, what are you talking about? No, I'm not, how am I trying to be funny? Her skin is beautiful. I guess she had already read your story. Okay. So she thought I was being facetious mm -hmm. and keep saying it. And I'm like, no. And she's like, you haven't read Kaylee's story. I'm like, what story? So when she, t I had no clue and I felt bad after that. Aww. And shortly after you came to the back galley and I think I was eating. And now I'm, now I don't want to say anything. Cause I feel like a jerk. Like I hope she doesn't think I was being mean. I thought you were just flattering me. No, I no, I really loved your skin <laughs> because of the cheekbones. And remember mm -hmm. I kept saying, you could really do print work. You could really do print work. So you knew your story. She knew the story. I'm just a flight attendant coming on, think, like, oh, and you, you were fairly new. Mm -hmm. So I had no clue. And that's the story of how we met and and, and I just want to share that the reason that I came to wanting to talk to you is you shared how pivotal United was in, in, in your coming out as far as transitioning. Absolutely. And this is something I've always wanted to do because of my struggle and I wanted to share and help. And you came to mind because you were so in your storyline talk so much about how much it helped you and it being a family. And I started wondering, how are you doing? Where, what happens to Kaylee now that her, this part of her family is gone. And so that's why I reached out to you. So I just wanted to share like how mm -hmm. we met because we're talking about looking at you now and you're telling me you had a beard and the Kyle picture that I saw and coming to now, no, we were at the young lady you were dating. Mm -hmm. That was by and yeah. Okay. So, so she.